Welcome to What's New with AWS. I'm Jeff Barr. I've got some great launches to share with you today. First up, let's talk about Amazon Code Guru. When it comes to code, we all know that efficiency always matters and that faster is always better. Simple to say, but not always easy to do. So Code Guru is a new way to improve your customer experience and to lower your cloud costs. It also helps to make your code safer and more efficient. We announced this at reInvent and it's now generally available with some great new features. To me, this is a great example of the power of machine learning. There's two parts to Code Guru: the reviewer and the profiler. The reviewer has been trained on a massive amount of code from Amazon and from GitHub, and it works by examining pull requests and making recommendations. These recommendations address security, performance, and even identify redundant code. The newest features include support for GitHub Enterprise and also additional types of recommendations. The profiler gives you interactive visualizations and recommendations focused on performance. It's going to help you find the code that consumes the most CPU or that adds latency. It works on code that uses a JVM language. This includes Java, Scala, Kotlin, Groovy, Clojure, and so forth. The newest features here include Lambda support, cost estimates, and anomaly detection. If you'd like to learn more, check out Danilo's blog post. Next, let's talk about Amazon RDS Proxy. This is going to help to make your applications more scalable, more secure, and more resilient. It is great for serverless apps and also for containerized applications that make lots of connections to databases. We previewed this at reInvent and it's now generally available. Let's start with a couple fast facts. It supports MySQL and PostgreSQL through RDS or for Aurora. It improves client recovery time by up to 75%. It keeps the underlying database connection open for potential reuse, and you can enable it for most of your apps with no code changes. Really easy to use. You start in the console, you create a proxy endpoint for your database, you set your connection limit as a percentage of your maximum database connections, you choose a secret and an IAM role, your proxy is ready in minutes, you point your application to the endpoint, and you're all set to go. To learn more about the RDS proxy, read Chani's blog post. Our next cool launch is live kernel patching for Amazon Linux 2. This means you can now apply critical kernel security updates and bug fixes in place without a reboot. This is going to reduce disruption and allow you to get fixes out ASAP. The fixes come from the existing repo, and you can even use the AWS Systems Manager Patch Manager to automate. It works on the x86 64-bit architectures. You need to have a recent kernel. You're going to need to install a new YUM plugin on the EC2 instance or your on-premises VM. You'll also have to enable the live patching on the kernel. Each kernel version is going to have live patches available for three months. Behind the scenes, this uses kpatch. It replaces entire kernel functions with newer versions. Before it does that, it pauses all the running processes, applies the patches, and then it lets the processes resume. This is really cool and really powerful, so check it out. OK, so for our fourth and our final launch, let's do a deep dive into Amazon Honeycode. This is designed to let you build powerful web and mobile apps without writing any code. It uses a spreadsheet model, so all that you know about spreadsheets, values, and formulas still applies. There's a long list of built-in functions, many of which will probably already be familiar to you. You can get started with Honeycode in minutes. You log in and you create your account. From there, you're going to see your workbooks and your apps. Honeycode gives you templates for common applications, things like to-dos, customer trackers, surveys, inventory, and so forth. These apps are ready right away, and you can either use them as is, or you can customize them. You can also take them apart, look inside for ideas and for best practices. Inside Honeycode, tables are central to the apps, and you've got lots of formatting and functional options. The Honeycode App Builder is very powerful. You can see and you work on all the screens of your app. All the screens have both web and mobile layouts. These layouts start out linked, so changes you make in one are going to appear in the other, but you can actually unlink them and edit them individually. The objects on the screens reference elements in tables, either directly or through powerful filter expressions. Honeycode automations make things happen. These automations are triggered based on a date and time or on a data change. The automations can generate email notifications, they can add or delete a table row, they can overwrite an existing row, and so forth. Once your app is built, you can share it with members of your team. Each user can actually be a member of multiple teams, giving you lots and lots of flexibility. To learn more about Honeycode, check out my blog post. And that's what I've got for you today. We love your feedback, and we always look forward to it. Send us an email, send me a tweet, leave a comment on the video. We'd love it if you subscribe to our channel, click the bell for notifications. Thanks, as always, for watching, and we shall see you again soon.